Hello, uh, Mr. Yusufi here again, and I'm here to show you the step-by-steps to creating a Desmos graph for your Pendulum Lab. Okay, so the first step that we want to do is we want to open up the Pendulum Desmos link, and that's attached right here. So if you click that open, you're going to be taken directly to Desmos, and I'm going to move my screen over here so you can see. Uh, the first thing you want to do is log in or sign up. I'm going to assume that maybe you, some of you need to sign up, but I'm going to log in and I will choose my login with Google account. And I will click my North Wasco uh, County school account. So now I have uh, my Desmos graph ready to go. Uh, and I'm logged in. <clears throat> and then the next thing, man, I'm going to have to keep moving this, I think. Maybe right there, perfect. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to save my graph into my account. So the first thing I will do is I'm gonna change the name. I'm gonna say unit one pendulum lab. I'm gonna hit space and then I'm gonna put my first name and then last initial, okay? So once you do that, click save and then this will be saved into your account now. Uh, I also want to mention that as you're watching this, you should pause, rewind, go back a little bit, play again. All right, this is at your own pace. So I really want you to take the time to get everything right. So if you need to pause, do that now, rewind, so on and so on, okay? The next thing I want to show you is the graph itself. We are going to be plotting on an X and Y axis. All right. And when we're plotting our uh, variables, we want to make sure that uh, we have them set up in the right spot. Now, remember, our angle in degrees was our independent variable. And so our independent variable is always going to go on the x-axis unless we tell you otherwise. The dependent variable, which is the time of the swing, will be on the y-axis. And we've already labeled the axes for you. As we go on later in Desmos, you will actually be editing and labeling your own um, axes. Also notice that the axes have, in parentheses, the unit they were measured in. So for angle, we measure angle in degrees. And for the time of swing, it is in seconds. OK. So next, let's move over and take a look at the data table section. All right, all of this stuff right up here, just ignore it. Don't bother looking at it, or you don't need to touch it or anything. OK. Next, you'll see your data table. And in the data table, you have A for angle. And those were the different angles that we raised the pendulum up to, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. And then on the next column will be the time of the swing in seconds. And so this is where we're going to enter our time data. Now, here is where we get our time data. If you go back to the Google Classroom, you can open up your class data table, and you will enter your, all of this class data right here. This is the time data that we are working with. All right. So the time data will go here. So as you can see, we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. All right. And then in the Desmos graph, if I can get back to it. Uh, there we go. In the Desmos graph, and we actually don't have a 60. So there we go. So we had, you're gonna fill in the time data for each of your angles. So I'm gonna let you do that and I will enter just some random data here. This is not your data you're entering, okay? So I might just actually change it to something a little bit higher so that I know that you didn't um, 
just copy from here. All right, perfect. So go ahead and hit pause if you need to, so that way you can enter your time data. And then when you're ready to go, just hit play again. And when you hit play again, you'll see what to do next. So if you're back, the next thing we want to do is we want to see what kind of a pattern does our data fit. So on this column, you will see all sorts of different colors. We have a red, a blue, an orange, and a black, and then equations associated with those colors. Okay. Now, which pattern are we going to use? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to take this A bar right here. It says A equals zero right now, and it's a slider. So what I'm going to do is click on it. Whoops. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to slide all of our patterns up and down. And you're going to slide it until you get one pattern that fits through most of your data points. Okay, so if I scroll it up, I'm going to keep going until I get some kind of line that goes through most of my data points. All right, so I'm going to say maybe right there. Okay, you want to try and get your line to go through as many data points as possible, which means as many as through the center of these points here. All right, so once you determine what your pattern is, take a look at what color that is. What color is that line? To me, that looks like it's a red line. So I'm going to come over here and I am going to find the color red and all the other ones I'm going to click and turn off. Okay, and so now I see that I have a straight line, straight horizontal line going through my data points. And the next thing I want to do is adjust my error bars or my uncertainties. Okay, so to find those, you will find your uncertainty for the angle and degrees is five right here. So when you go back to Desmos, because our angle in degrees is on the X axis, which runs horizontal, then it, we're talking about our horizontal error bar, all right, our horizontal uncertainty. So I'm going to delete that, and if it says, oops, if it says five on our data table, then I'm going to hit five, right? So plus, there we go, plus or minus five right here. So when I go back to my graph, I can see that my horizontal bar is five. And then my vertical arrow bar is going to be whatever our uncertainty was that you determined for your class. So whatever this highest value is, that's going to go there. All right, for this example, I'm going to leave it at 0.3. And so now I have a nice looking horizontal line graph. It looks great. Okay, we will talk about this together as a class. Okay, once we get there, um, but make a note of what this looks like. All right, and now you have your graph. So what I want you to do now is once you've got it all done and everything looks like this, I want you to click share the graph. And you're going to come down to this section here that says export image. All right, so when you click on that, it gives you my line, all my points, my labeled axes. And what I want to do next is click this download PNG. Okay, so when I click on that, what it does is it saves it to my downloads file. All right, so then once I'm done there, the last thing I'll do, remember, is to click Save on the graph. 
I've saved my graph, I'm good to go, and then I'll come back to the Google Classroom. And when you're here, you'll see there's an option to attach or upload an assignment. All right, what you're going to do is click that button to upload or an, attach an assignment, and a window is going to pop up. And you're going to locate your downloads folder. Okay. When you look at your downloads folder, it will pop up with this option. And you're going to click your desmosgraph.png that you just downloaded. Okay. And then you will click OK, and then it'll attach, and then you hit the turn in button. I'm pretty sure I'll get a lot of questions about that. So um, I will walk you through it in class as well. All right, and there's your walkthrough for creating your graph. Uh, once it's done and your graph's uploaded, our next class, we will talk about this pattern we just discovered. Well done, nicely, nice work, and uh, I will see you guys in class.